You're watching Movie Guide. I'm Cheryl Crisp. We're here in Dallas, Texas, on the red carpet for the Kendrick Brothers' latest movie, Overcomer. Let's talk to the cast and crew. Alex, the Kendrick Brothers always ask God what movie they should make and what it should be about. Tell me about that. So we believe that God is the best storyteller. You know, he, he, he wrote the best book of all time. And so whenever we go into a, a movie season, we always say, God, would you inspire us with the stories you want us to tell? And he always, a, after a, a time of prayer, he always sends us to a certain theme. So we'll begin researching that theme and the story that goes with it. And so that's how we came up with Courageous and War Room and now Overcomer. And, and so uh, eventually we want to get people to walk closer to God. So yes, there is an entertainment aspect to this. We want to make movies that are entertaining, but even more than that, that have redemption. So when they walk out of the movie theater, that they're asking themselves uh, questions to help them grow in their faith. And so if they are closer to God as a result of seeing one of these films, then that is success for us. As we were talking about, there's always a biblical uh, message or theme. Courageous was fatherhood, war in prayer, and now overcomer is identity. What real life problems and life lessons do you think people can learn from this movie? So I want everybody asking themselves, what have I allowed to define me? We believe that the creator is the one that defines his creation. And so uh, your identity shouldn't come from things that change easily, not from feelings or circumstances, even a title or a financial status. We want it to come from, as scripture says, from the one who made you, that gives you your value. And when we find ourselves in the Lord through faith in Jesus Christ, he gives us incredible value. And since his character doesn't change, it's the perfect anchor for our identity. Did you learn anything about your own identity during this process? For me, the Lord challenged me with my own identity that I am not first and foremost a filmmaker or a, a storyteller. I am first and foremost a child of God, a follower of Jesus Christ, then a husband, then a father, and then a filmmaker. So if the filmmaking changes, I still know who I am. You know, so that's something that the Lord really impressed in my heart during this process. You were a pastor at Sherwood Baptist Church, serving in the church ministry for 20 years. When you're acting in inspirational films, are you ministering to the movie audiences? You know, uh, I would say yes. This is another form of ministry. It's not standing behind a pulpit, so to speak, and, and preaching, but through the message of the story, we, we hope to touch the heart and, and, and give them truth. So Jesus told parables. And he told parables to present truth to the masses, and that's really what we want to do through visual media. You're a father of six kids. What do you want your kids and younger people today to take away from this movie? So for my six kids, from Overcomer, I hope they would say that my identity is in the right thing, that it's in my faith in Jesus Christ first. It's in what he says about me first. Before culture, before friends, before uh, anybody else says anything about me, I first put my, my anchor, if you will, in what God says about me. And because of that, uh, they, they will be solid people. They will be solid brothers and, and children and one day husbands and wives and fathers. And, and so, uh, yeah, that's what I would want for my kids. How can you relate to your character that you play in the movie? So my character in the movie is John Harrison. He's a coach that, that is so bent on winning that it becomes the primary part of his identity. And in real life, I had to say, if I never make a, another movie, would I know who I am? And so like the character in the movie, he had to reorder the pieces of his identity so that his faith in Jesus Christ was number one before winning as a, as, a, as a coach. And so in real life, I have to make sure that my faith in the Lord is number one before watching how a movie does or a book sells or whatever it is. So those things cannot determine my identity because they're changing things. So I have to keep my, my identity in the Lord. So you starred in War Room, and I could only imagine how important it is for you to be in inspiring films like Overcomer. It's critical in our day and age that there are films that not only can the whole family come and see it safe for your entire family, but also in this time when there's so much hopelessness and a little bit of despair, there's got to be something that is there in entertainment to lift you up out of that despair and provide you with something solid that you can hope in, something that doesn't change. because everything else does. The political landscape changes and finances change and our health can be up one day and down tomorrow, but our God doesn't change. He's the same. And I think that kind of hope is critical in this day and age. Did you learn anything about your own identity through your character, Olivia? Absolutely. I learned, you know, the Lord has a way of doing this. And every single project that I've been a part of, God sort of 
points a finger at me, it becomes a spotlight on me, whatever the theme of that is. And so with War Room, that was marriage, and me and Jerry had to work through some stuff in our marriage during that stage. And then what I can, om I can only imagine, it was forgiveness and making sure that you're extending that to people who maybe don't even deserve it and aren't asking for it. And then here, the topic is identity, making sure that our significance isn't rooted in something um, that is an illegitimate attachment. It's something that really we shouldn't be finding our value in. And the Lord shined a spotlight for me in that area that the acceptance of a certain group of people mattered too much to me. It's not that there's anything wrong with it, but when it matters so much to you that losing it doesn't just disappoint you, but devastates you, that means that it's got too much of a hold on you. And the Lord sort of reminded me of that and reminded me that my value doesn't come from whether or not someone else appreciates me or accepts me, that I'm valuable because he says that I am, and that's enough. Stephen, this is the sixth feature film for the Kendrick Brothers. There are always powerful messages and words of wisdom how do you go about the writing process? Do you start with things that you want to say or lines and work the movie around it? Uh, I think with every film, uh, as we're praying for months, the Lord starts inspiring concepts. And it would be a truth from scripture. It would be an illustration we want to incorporate. Alex usually gets these emotional scene ideas where something very powerful and emotional is happening. And it's usually at the end of the film. And so at the same time, I'm learning things from scripture and we keep seeing the Lord kind of marrying those two together. Uh, my wife and I were going through the process of adoption and the, the chapters of Ephesians 1 and 2 took on new life for me that apart from Christ, we're separated from him without hope in this world. And then God adopts us into his kingdom when we give our lives to Christ. And then our identity completely changes. At the same time, Alex was coaching all six of his kids to state championship wins in cross country. And he's standing on the sidelines cheering them on. And these storyline ideas are popping in his head about this girl who's insecure, doesn't know who she is, and she's running cross country. And so the Lord kind of brought together the things that he was teaching me with the things that Alex was learning. And then we'll sit in a room and start praying and developing. We, we write them on colored sticky notes and we put them up on the wall to develop those scenes. And, uh, and eventually... You know, we'll start the script writing process. He's a much better storyteller than I am. I love to add color to the characters and humor and biblical principles, but Alex is very good at, at putting it all together. This movie trailer made me laugh and cry, and that's the sign of a great script writer. Are there certain lines in the movie that you just really love? Uh, yes, there are. Um, there, Thomas, the character who's in the hospital bed, if people haven't seen the movie, you're going to totally love him. He has a lot of funny lines. He's blind, and there's a moment when John comes in and says, I want to introduce you to my wife, and he was like, I never saw that coming, you know, and it's there's these little subtle humor things that happen in the film, and so I love the conversation between Priscilla Shire, uh, her character Olivia, and Alex's character John when she's trying to convince him to coach cross country, and he doesn't want to do it, and he's trying to talk her out of it. So that's a fun that's a fun moment, and then the championship race at the end of the film is a nail biter. It is. Uh, edge of your seat excitement and just the whole dynamic I don't want to give away what happens there the whole dynamic of what is happening people uh, I think are just deeply touched by the, the 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 way that she's running and how she's being inspired so you have six children what do you want your children to learn from this and other young people um, well, my kids got to be a part of the process of making this film. They were on set. They were watching Answers to Prayer. They are watching their dads uh, dedicate every day to the Lord. So for them to see God at work uh, around them and to see specific prayers and specific answers, that are, there's no explanation other than the Lord showed up. And then for them to be a part of the process, they worked really hard last summer in Columbus, Georgia in the heat during the production and they loved every minute of it. And so I think that they developed a, a hunger for working hard on something that matters and will impact the kingdom. At the same time, the message of the movie of identity has is such a universal message that everyone needs to hear. And so uh, it, it worked, uh, it, it was a big uh, thing for us personally to discover more about who our identity is in Christ. And for our kids, for us to be able to teach them about that early on, they don't have to wait till they're 45 to l really learn more about that. So that means a lot. You used Lauren Dangle's song, You Say. Why that song? It was interesting that right now in the body of Christ, there seems to be this emphasis on identity. 
And so there's the Hillsong song about who you say I am. It was hitting number one in the worship uh, scene. Lauren Daigle's song, You Say, not only number one in Christian radio, but then secular radio. It is all about identity. Uh, we incorporated it into the movie because it fits perfectly the storyline of Hannah and her journey in the movie. It, it, it just, it was almost like the song was written for this scene that it's in in the movie. And so uh, we know the Lord is the great symphony orchestrator of his body, and he's the one putting all the pieces together and uh, we're we're trying to join him in that we tell people we're not driving the bus we're just grateful to be on the bus and watch God work so Cameron the Kendrick brothers always has a character that is full of wisdom and that is your character in this film Thomas tell me about him well Thomas is a man who has been through dire straits he's been and done everything wrong and finally in all his wrongness he uh, found an understanding of the true Christ and and it changed his life and so he, uh, before his, his last breath, wants to make sure that everybody knows who God is and how they can actually have a purpose and a fulfilled life by having him. And uh, everyone would, would think that, you know, being in, in dire straits, being on your last leg would be someone that is, you know, uh, mad at the world. But Thomas is still giving life. You know, he's finally found life and he's giving it and he's giving it joyously. And so it was, uh, it was good to be able to play that role. You have some fantastic lines in the movie. It's incredible. Do you have a favorite line or lines from the movie? Oh my gosh, there's so many of them. You know, one of the things that my wife and I talk about all the time when they uh, uh, show one of the previews, and he said, well, you know, uh, you lost everything. That's, that's sad even for me, you know? And, and uh, here he is, he can't see, he has diabetes and everything else, and then he's talking to this guy that has lost all of what he thinks makes him him. And even a person who doesn't see can see that he's better off than, than what you know, John Harrison thinks. And so it was, very, uh, uh, it was a lot of fun. Does this make you think about your identity closer? Oh, without a doubt. You know, without a doubt. I think any time that you get an opportunity to play someone like this, it either draws you closer, it shows you where you're not, whatever it is, every way in which it will minister to other people is how it ministers to you. And it's a real blessing to be able to be in touch with uh, that kind of, of, of passion and fervor for God and to realize that, you know, by the grace of God, he's uh, been able to get you as close uh, as well in your personal life. Absolutely. Um, you were in Star Trek The Next Generation, <laughs> the inspirational movie I Still Believe and Now Overcomer. Yeah. Is there a different feel or atmosphere when you're on an inspirational film versus a regular film? Oh my gosh, that's like the question of the era. You know, being on the set with the Kendricks is like a slice of heaven. These guys are not only doing films that matter, but they are showing you how to live life in their personal lives. You know, to have them as, as now people that I can say are mentors or friends is uh, an award in itself. And uh, so having the lack of tension, the lack of issues, the lack of argument, you know, that you would find on a secular set with them. They're praying together. They're bringing people together. And people have a want to uh, do the right thing. Nothing else like it. That's the way it should be. Sherry, you are Amy Harrison in the movie. What's it like playing opposite Alex? Oh my goodness, it's been such an, I mean, it was so much fun playing opposite of him. He is, he's such a funny man, first of all, you know, he just, he's full of characters, he's always asking questions, he's just, he keeps the scenes going all the time, and to watch him acting and directing and working with the crews, uh, it was just absolutely wonderful, probably one of the best experiences I've ever had, so he's incredible. Being in a movie like this, does it make you think about your own identity? Absolutely. I think that was one thing, even in reading the script with Overcomer, as I read it, I just realized that there was so much that God was speaking to me about this movie and how identity was still something in my life that I was still having to constantly battle with. Um, I think that that's the culture that we live in today. And so uh, just, it was so good, though, to be a part of this and be reminded. I love that question, who defines you? And um, I think that's one thing. Every day that I get up and I have this moment, I go, okay, wait a minute. Who is it that defines me and um, and I think that's true for this movie and how it's going to speak to people. American Idol Jordan Sparks is your niece. Yes. Um, do you think she and young people like her will enjoy this movie? 
I think they will. I think this is a movie for everyone. This movie is really about the family. Uh, I think people from preteens to teens, adults, they can all enjoy it. And I think what's great, even for Jordan and her family at this point, and some of the younger nieces that I have, you know, um, they can bring their kids to this, and they're going to love it. They're going to be cheering, and they're going to see themselves and and the young character Hannah and and one and and be reminded that they can overcome and do things that they desire. You were a jump roper in War Room. What's it like playing the movie son of your real life dad, Alex Kendrick, in this movie, Overcomer? Um, I loved the doing with him. Um, it's it's much. I feel much more comfortable doing with him. You know, being my dad and all. And um, I love him. He's a. I love him. He's a great dad to our family. And actually, when we were younger, he used to help us do little project movies at home. And that was really fun. Yeah. What's it like for you to walk the red carpet? Oh, it's great. It's really, it's a really cool experience. Yeah. And we thank God for letting us be able to do this. What do you hope other young people like yourself can learn from this movie? Um, we want them to walk away with knowing their identity in Christ and to know that God gets to define his creation. And we want them to really be filled with the Spirit and uh, have an encounter with God while they're watching this. Did you learn anything about your own identity when you were filming this movie? Um, yes, it's not always about what other people think about you. It really only matters what God thinks about you and what He says about you. So, yeah. Can you get that message out to the whole world? Um, don't be worried about what, other think, what others think of you. Don't be worried about what the world thinks of you. Just be worried about what God thinks about you. Erin, you are 16 years old and you're playing Hannah Scott. Um, and this is your acting debut. What was it like playing the lead in this movie? It was awesome. I'm a person who has anxiety, so I was coming to this movie like, I'm going to do horrible, I'm not even going to do good. But once the camera's turned on, just something different changed. And I'm like, I got this, because this is what I want to do, and God would not let me do a bad job, and he, if, he would put me here to do a good job. So I was like, I just got to calm down and not let my nerves get the best of me and just do what I'm here to do. With this movie, did it make you think differently about your identity and who you belong to? Yes, ma'am. I think I've always been a person to try to fit in with the crowd, to try to be somebody else. And I've, had, I've studied Ephesians 1 and 2 with my church, but I've never truly thought about it. And I think God loves me, so why am I trying to change for everybody else? Everybody else should like me because God likes me. And I should just keep loving Him and give Him all the praise all the time. What would you like young people your age to get from this movie? We come in a generation where Snapchat or Instagram and you're not cool if you don't get enough likes or if you don't look a certain way and I just want kids to know you're perfect the way you are and your personality is perfect the way it is. I mean if you're being mean somebody change of course but if people just don't like you and are telling you to change don't listen. Pray about it. Do what God wants you to do and just share his story to other people and just be you because that's all you can do. Are you a little nervous to see the movie or more excited? Um, I'm excited because I've already seen the movie four times. So it was like, it's so awesome. And at first I was like, why did, why did I do this part like this? I could have done that so much better. But now every time I watch the movie, it gets way easier. So Jack, you play Ethan Harrison, coach John Harrison's son. Does this movie make you think deeper or differently about your identity and where it comes from? Absolutely. Um, it's been really cool to see how God has called me to be an actor and how I've been studying it in college, but then as I was getting ready to graduate college, not knowing where he wanted me to go next, and then right at the end of my junior year, getting ready to do a project like this, started to communicate, okay, God seemed to be like, this is what I want you to do, and this is who I want you to be, and this is the type of message that I want you to be able to sh be sharing with people, and so it, it definitely challenged what I was thinking about who I am and who God was calling me to be, and it's, it's been really humbling. How important do you think films like this are for your generation and just people in general? I think they're really critical because I feel like my generation, from, from college age kids and even high school kids, they really want to know that they belong. It's really critical for their identity and for their like security in who they are. Um, and people are constantly plagued by anxiety and depression and these things that are just constantly sh shifting their identity off of kilter. And so it's projects like this that actually give them a sense of renewed strength and, and dignity and also a dose of humility with that. So it's. It's paramount. It's incredibly important. You're only 23. 
<laughs> Did you learn a lot about yourself in this movie? Yes and no. I would say Ethan is a high schooler, so it was a little bit of a throwback for me, even though I've got the baby face to be able to work for the high school age. Um, it was bit, it was like kind of looking back at my high school days and trying to like think through, okay, how did I think in high school? What were my priorities? Where was my focus? But again, for me being in college and, and having just graduated this past May, looking forward at who God wants me to be and where he wants me to go and, and who he wants me to interact with are questions that have been on the top of my mind. And, and so working on this project has been really helpful in thinking through that kind of thing. Tell me about your character, Ethan. So Ethan's character arc follows John's character arc in a lot of ways, um, in the sense that John's identity is placed in his sport, in coaching basketball. And what happens is when basketball is taken away from him, he starts to question who he is and what's important to him. And Ethan does much of the same thing. He kind of follows his father through that arc, because when he loses his team as a senior, he starts wondering, what am I supposed to do next? How do I get into college? And then as he observes his father come back to centering his identity in the Lord, he then starts to counter and follow his father in that as well. It's really cool. That's a wrap from the red carpet. Overcomer in theaters nationwide August 23rd. For more information, go to movieguide.org.